So the Reddit thread was like, no, do not like the pyramids. Indeed. <laughs> oh, that was good DPS. That was nice. Not from you, like, obviously. Why are you playing technology? <laughs> What's this? I mean, you messaged me and made me feel bad. You went, you have any idea how much you're being carried by your gear. And I'm like, absolutely. <laughs>
I'm that was quite heavy. That. Oh, Chris is a machine. Yeah, we, we I, I want to be clear with the audience. We have brought a scam healer. Uh, this is a raid healer because we knew this was probably going to be rough on Tyrannical. Uh, Spires is not the, the funnest dungeon ever anyway. Um, so you left the guild. You recognized what was happening and were like, yep, I'm out. And you went and joined a better guild. And I was like, yep. you have no loyalty. You have bad <laughs> commitment, man. <laughs> I mean, I stayed for a little bit, but once I saw that the ship was sinking, you know, uh, there was no point staying. And you kind of had this idea of being the big dog that um, would would uh, bring up the newbies. I think that was that was kind of your take. I right? believed, man. I had the same thing that I see so many people do uh, now, which is loyalty to my first guild, because they uh, the berserkers invited me on my level fifty six priest. Uh, I had not even capped, and they invited me to the guild. Uh, basically, they just desperately needed healers because they weren't a very good guild. But my my take on it was like these guys believe in me; <laughs> they really believe. Um, and so <laughs> I, I committed to the cause uh, to stay there through thick and thin. Let's put it that way. And it was through thick and thin. It was fucking awful, and they never got anywhere because you were easily one of our better players, as were several others, and they all just left to better guilds and left me alone. Uh, which <laughs> and I was, I think it was me and a wonderful guy called Varez, uh, who luckily I did get to meet IRL, who stuck around for a little while, and then eventually he left, and I was like, well, you know what? I'm just fucked at this point. Man, at that uh, point, you kind of missed out the boat on getting higher very quickly, right? Because at that point, you were kind of like one guild behind. Because yeah. how, how it kind of works is, um, back in um, back in vanilla days, there was like feeder guilds. You basically, the way you went up was through getting gear in one guild, then fucking over that guild, leaving with that gear to go to a guild <laughs> that... Um, uh was actually much higher progressed and yep. that's just how it worked it I mean, was I and i didn't recognize that like at all <laughs> 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 i was like no this is my guild and i am with them till the death uh because they believe in me and therefore mm -hmm. i am i am going to stick with them through thick and thin and i did ultimately until literally i killed the guild which is how it ended up because my uh lust for progress out eventually outweighed my love of the guild uh, but then you drifted away for a while. I don't think you played much of the Burning Crusade. Oh, you, I'm, a, I'm a liar. I'm oh, now. something completely different happened, man. Yeah, I actually started... I, I, I'm so ambitious. <laughs> I was going to make the best guild in the world, Mike. And I, uh -huh. <laughs> I was going to make the best guild in the world and roped you in to be our mage officer, I think we could say. Uh, yeah. Uh, and you did. You Because you were an extremely, extremely good WoW player and still maintain to be one. Um... And so I stuck with that. Don't get hit by these on Tyrannical, by the way. It would be bad. Yeah. <laughs> it would be bad. It would be bad. Um, and so I roped you into that, and you did stick with us for the, the first tier. I think you drifted off after that, because uh, I'm not sure why. Maybe school. <laughs> you would have been about 17 when um, you went to college. Yeah. There was, a, there was uh, there, there's some problems at school, basically, at which, which point uh, the consensus was it was better to stop for a while, and um, so I did. I left, I think, in Tempest Keep. Yeah. Uh, back when Black Temple actually came out, but, uh, we were actually not at that stage yet, which is just a completely different world of WoW, right? Like, yeah. hey, uh, there's a, there's a new raid out, but we haven't even finished the last one. Yeah. So we need to do that first. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the point where I left. So I didn't actually play, um, uh, Wrath, I didn't play uh, Cataclysm, and it wasn't until Mop that I came back. Yeah, that was a long time, and uh, ironically enough, I went through the period of time when I was looking for a new guild, which I, I might have to go through again, which is one of the reasons I'm really dreading it, honestly, is when I signed up for a lot of guilds, um, and I got accepted, like, it was fine, you know, I mean, my gameplay was all over the internet, people were happy... So it wasn't difficult for me to find a guild back then. Um, but the problem I ran into is immediately after I was accepted, is people really started asking what the benefits to them would be. Uh, like, in terms of, would they start earning money from me? Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, I'd be... Oh, I just volleyed the fucking roof, man. I, just, I hate the camera when it swooshes across the screen. Um, <laughs> and they were like, well... 
okay, so you're going to be part of our guild. What benefits do we get? And I'm like, what yeah. do you mean? It's like, well, is there, we've heard you do like preach con where you bring the whole guild. I'm like, well, I don't pay for them to come. <laughs> like, what do you think happens here? <laughs> what about, um, what about BlizzCon? I'm like, what about BlizzCon? What the fuck? <laughs> you know, yeah, what about like a portion of the revenue from the videos? And I'm like, are you out of your mind? And I went through that with several people and it was super frustrating. It's so um, crazy how they thought that was a, an appropriate question. I, yeah, like, but not when I was applying. That was the weird thing. This came after I got accepted to places, uh, which I really, really disliked heavily, um, was having to go through that. Uh, so I just said, fuck it, and you just started playing again, and you were part of um, uh, a guild with uh, some old friends of ours. Mm -hmm. and, uh, not like Will 400, I want to say. Like something, you know, not the thing. No, 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 no. No, it was way, way, way lower back then. There was... um. Like, we, we were not even clearing, uh, like, Heroic back then was the hardest difficulty, right? You do a Hellstone, Mike, or he's going to get very upset. This guy takes his M plus very seriously. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to provide. It's what I'm yeah. here for, right? <laughs> I just, uh, he's, he's oh, like, uh, way. oh, shit. I'll fly back. Um, <laughs> I shall return. <laughs> he's coming back. Uh, so, yeah, back? but what basically happened was... Um, I think at some point you were doing a web show and it showed up in my YouTube recommendations. I was How like, "How do I get back? Like, no meme? Uh, isn't there? No, there's no dude to talk to. I've never tried going back. Huh? Uh, you might need to summon me, dude. I genuinely really? don't know how to go back. Uh, can I do? I might be able to do a sprinting leap across. I'm gonna try. This kind of sucks. Three seconds and sprints. Maybe? Oh, I think I did it, you know. Did it work? Oh, he's a god! <laughs> that totally worked. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I, I, I was like, dudes, can I just play with you? Because I just want a raid. That's it. <laughs> I'm like so fed up. I just want a raid. Uh, and came back to you guys and had the best time. And you, you're right, actually. I'm not sure what level we were when I joined, but we were World 400 by the time the guild died. Well, it was it was so a fast. while before you joined. I think you came back in uh, WOD, right? Because MOP was kind of the era where you um, went hardcore with your YouTube and your being a streamer and stuff. Yep. Yeah, it was. MOP was the uh, weird period of time where I was simultaneously in Method and also didn't give a fuck about, like, playing <laughs> Yep, I remember that. Yeah, it was really kind of grim. Uh, I felt bad for like wasting their time, uh, but I, I mean, it paid off. So it was it was the right decision to make. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> it was uh, it was kind of awkward. It was kind of awkward. Cause ironically, ironically, I don't know if I've ever told this. Uh, one of the big counters to me joining uh, Method at the time, uh, like I didn't find this out until later was that they were, several of the members, and rightfully so, I think, uh, having this thought, thought I was trying to join to boost my YouTube career. That was it. Uh, <laughs> for no other reason at all, which was absolutely not the case, because I don't... They don't know you race. at all, then. No, they didn't know me. So, but if you can imagine somebody who's got some sort of YouTube presence trying to join this guild, they were like, well, I'm pretty sure he's trying to just, you know, up his career. Um, I guess I guess it must have happened before, where they might have had certain application that looked like yours. Uh, maybe, I guess. I think it's a very standard thing to think. I don't think it was that strange for, them to, for some players, certainly ones who didn't know me, to think that. Um, but it was one of the counters, and then they were very surprised when <laughs> I joined, and I was like, yeah, I don't stream the raids or anything, and I don't really, you know, I will use raid footage, but not because it's method or anything like that. That's mm -hmm. not going to happen. And they were like, oh, and uh, one of the greatest tales I have from that is one of the biggest counters to me joining, or player who was most against me joining the guild, completely flipped. Uh, and changed his mind and became somebody who talked to me all the time. <laughs> it was mm -hmm. like, uh, and he was the biggest one who was like, fuck this guy. Like, he's never joined the guild. I got in and then once I started playing, they were like, ah, okay, this guy's actually pretty chill. <laughs> uh, that was like one of my greatest takeaways from that. Um, but on your side, you, um, your World of Warcraft history is long and solid because you've always been... Like I say, you've never mithered, but you've always taken it very seriously when you did play, which I always really appreciated. Yeah, it, it's kind of the, the fun of it all, right? Is, uh, ooh, probably what I want to send here. E. 50. Yeah, that's okay. 
Um, yeah, that's always the fun. I think the most fun I have with WoW is just getting to grips with all, with all the mechanics and just min-maxing the shit out of them, right? Mm -hmm. Just uh, learning a class to its absolute limits and then pushing it. And um, that's all, always been the best part about this game, to me anyway. And I, th yep. I think that's probably the, like, the best part of, uh, about the game uh, for you as well. Uh, it's it's over. I have a, like a slightly different take. Like I love min maxing during progress. Like during progress, I will do whatever I can to be the best I can be. Um, but I, I also have the point when that's done, I just hardcore lose all interest. <laughs> like, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. So that's that's not the case for me. Like I like pushing it and and farm. Uh, yeah, farm. And, I will and... drop any raid immediately. <laughs> it's like because as soon as anybody's like, hey, can anyone step out? And I'm like, yep. <laughs> immediately because i like it's it's my farm raids i get it. it it's one of those things that i understand why we do it um less so these days like farm raiding really makes very little sense to me at least since bfa because they usually replace all our gear in the first week uh mm -hmm. so it makes less and less sense to me why we do it and i find it very just dis dis demotivating it's nice to play alts and stuff that's cool but you know you're playing a lot of hours for no reason, because <laughs> you're going to be doing like six M pluses when the new season launches and all your gear is invalidated. Um, True, but it's it's the logs. The logs are are fun, logs right? Don't really mean anything anymore. <laughs> you know, I guess this time, like, did you I see guess it's, we went um, through them PI logs? <laughs> oh yeah, that's a thing now, isn't it? They're hilarious. Like I was skipping through them, and so many of the top logs are with like three dedicated priests providing PI to one guy. You know, getting six PIs over a few minutes, like, that's insane. That's I mean, like, that's just that's just going to happen, right? If it's available, it's fun, people right? are going to use it. Yeah. yeah, it's fun. Like, I've never minded that. In fact, some of the best farm raids I've had uh, were during the Burning Crusade, where we pushed and pushed as hard as we could. I totally get it. Uh, that is fun. Like, if you're doing some challenges. it was. I would say it was the biggest downfall, or not downfall, but the biggest thing I didn't like about uh, Bald, Fat, and Ugly uh, is that Alex, kind of rightfully so, there's an argument either way, did not enjoy doing that kind of stuff. You mm -hmm. know, like, how hard can we really push the limits of our capabilities here? Like, hey, Alex, there's a new strat. No, old strat, we're doing uh, what we know. We're doing what we know, <laughs> and we know works. Like, that is the end of the story. And it's like, all right. <laughs> sure. And I guess, if we have to. Uh, so it was, that was one of the things I did enjoy. And, uh, our, my guild in the Burning Crusade actually did that every week. Like, they would spend all week figuring out, how can we do this differently? Even to the point we wiped, uh, do you remember the Mount Hajal? I don't know if you ever Uh, I never did, no. I oh. only found it for Transmog, which, um, isn't exactly the same experience. <laughs> Please don't pull this. I beg. Okay, he's good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I beg. Um, well, in Mount Hajal, they had this awesome system, Mike. You, I'm so sad you missed out on it. Uh, is that you would do wave-based like horde mode uh, mm -hmm. combat, and then the boss would spawn. But if you wiped on the boss, you had to do all the waves again. Um, super fun. Anyway, we were like doing. Uh, we were on a farm raid of Hajal, and somebody discovered that one of the bosses, I believe, he was called Asgalor. Uh, had had some scam involved, which involved Resto Shaman. Because the idea with Asgalor is he would do Reign of Fire and the melee had to get out of it. Uh, but it would, mm -hmm. it would happen a lot, right? It would just be really frustrating for the melee to deal with. Uh, but some guild had found if you had four or five Resto Shamans, uh, they could just sp stand in a ball and spam Chain Heal non-stop on the melee and they wouldn't have to get out. And it saved about 30 seconds. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> right? On a, like a six minute fight or something. So it did make it technically faster. And we wiped so many times until we eventually got it right that I was fucking fuming. I was so <laughs> angry. I was like, this has been so worthless. But at the same time, the melee feedback was like, this is awesome. Because <laughs> we don't have to run out all the time. This is the best day of my life. Well, and so you were, that, were, you, were you tanking at that point? I was tanking. So my job on Asgalore, I, I think I'm getting the name right. I might not be. Uh, you have to apologize. I, I, if I describe the fight, people will know which one I'm talking about. But uh, my job was I was the off tank, uh, the official off tank to our main tank, who was better than me, so whatever. Um, my job was to stand outside of the raid. And what the, the boss also did was periodically debuff people to die, like Veil does. Uh, mm -hmm. And then they would spawn an infernal. And so I would stand miles away from the raid and wait for people to get marked. And then I would tank their infernal. And that was my job. 
uh, for the whole thing. <laughs> and so <laughs> I was not happy at all that, that I'd been sort of put into this scenario. Very, very, very unhappy that this was happening. Uh, especially because we were wiping, because it was one of those bosses that I couldn't wait to be over for that very reason. And it just did not work out that way. <laughs> like, under any <laughs> circumstances. Really bad. Um, but coming back to you anyway, so... You have been here like six months, but behind the scenes, because you built our whole website. Indeed, I did. Which, was which not wasn't why you were actually hired. no, <laughs> but it's not the reason I was hired. So basically, over the summer we had a conversation where you wanted to go more into variety gaming, and mm -hmm. uh, you wanted to give it a go with um, uh, with me to get that going and get it started. Well, for some context um, to that is uh, we never lo really lost contact at any point, even when mm -hmm. we weren't playing together. Uh, and what would happen, uh, the reason I wanted to, like, really had try and hire you, because we tried to hire you a long time ago, if you remember, um, but uh, we had Brexit, which you obviously are Dutch, uh, which yep. pre presented a lot of problems, and still does, unfortunately, it still does uh, present us <laughs> some problems. Um, so you were in between jobs, and it was like, oh, well, I really want to hire you, and the, one of the bigger reasons for that, and why we wanted to get you in for variety gaming, was that when I was playing a game I really was in love with, we were talking about them, and then what we do a little bit, with a couple of games, is you would play it, and then sort of relay your play session back to me, is what happened to you, because uh, I think yeah, exactly. did that mainly with the Outer Wilds. Um, Outer Wilds with Prey. Um, there, there's, a, there's a couple of games that you recommended to me that I would probably not have played. Um, yep. but, but you actually were rec recommending to me. So, uh, and then ah, I had such a good time and I was just sharing my play session with you. And we were discovering that we were doing things completely different because we're mm -hmm. completely different players. <laughs> yep. And we were uh, just experiencing the game in completely different ways. And th that. That was such a cool thing that um, I guess you you wanted my take on a lot of these things. It's and hard to find put them into video. a shared proper opinion on games because too many people look at games, in my opinion, as it's either good or bad, and that's like the limit of the conversation. It's either good or it's bad, uh, and with you, like it's the reason we started with I think the Outer Wilds and some other ones is there was very different ways of playing those games. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where it gets really interesting because it's like, well, what did you... It's like RPGs, right? Well, which choices did you make? And most of them are kind of, um, I guess, predetermined. So, like, Fallout, you would like, did you go with Caesar or not? <laughs> you know, like... Uh, and then what happened? That's cool. Uh, did you go light side or dark side in KOTOR? You know, like, okay, so which powers did you get, I guess? But with games that we were talking about, you could play them entirely differently. Uh, like in the t in, you know experience the story unfolding in different ways and that's when uh, I was like yeah because I would watch I remember thinking I would watch a video of you telling talking to me about this you know like and that's often how we look at how I look at things from a business way I guess is if uh, this conversation I'm having right now is awesome this should be a video uh, mm -hmm, it's very, exactly. very cool <laughs> which was, Safe, there, was there was there was this huge thing is outer worlds right where i think i said dude i just discovered this interloper and you went to the interloper first <laughs> yeah <laughs> or uh like the the black hole station like it's the stuff you found at the very end of the game i found first which yeah, was which, just uh, mind-blowing it's so weird when that happens because and it always happens i guess with open completely open games like that is uh you would like, oh yeah, I went to Whitehall Station naturally. Uh, and some people mm -hmm. are like, what the hell is Whitehall Station? Play the Outer Wilds. <laughs> Indeed. Just <laughs> play do that it. game. <laughs> we will do a video on it at some point. I'm sure, I can't wait to do it. Uh, but you could, you have a solar system. You can go wherever you want. And the best thing about it is uh, you can finish that game if you know what's happening in about 10 minutes. Uh, because everything you need to finish it is on your screen. Uh, but you just don't know what it is yet. <laughs> That's the thing. I, I didn't realize I went back through my VODs um, without being too spoilerific here, is I saw the uh, the impossible planet in my first scene. Uh, it's Are we doing there. a gateway scan here? Uh, what, sorry, one sec. Is he... Yeah, gateway. Gateway. Nice. Uh, is, I, go, um, I, I watch my VODs and I point it out and I'm like, what's that? We could go there. And then I dismiss it because it's a small planet. And I'm like, mm -hmm. eh, we'll go somewhere else. Uh, not realizing that, in fact, I sort of accidentally stumbled on a big puzzle. <laughs> How to do oh, things. I'm going to do chasing for some reason. I think he's going line of sight. Yeah. Don't touch it. Do, 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 do. 
Uh, we pulled a whole bunch of shit. Yeah, there, there's a dude chasing us from the uh, stair pack. Oh dear. Oh, we did. This has gone horribly wrong. Uh, let's see if we can wipe safe. No, probably not. Maybe I can get this. Did a pack pull? Uh, no, I just, I just dismissed it. I'm not sure how it had uh, pulled. Uh, I've got a combat res. Is it safe here? Should be safe. Fuck, I've released. Guess we all res then. Or I can summon? No. Everyone's nope. rest. <laughs> <laughs> no, not all. Uh, yeah, so we brought you in for the variety stuff, uh, but then you ended up wearing many hats because we just had so many different things happening at the end of the game. At the end of the year, we had that much going on, especially with the website, which was something that's been a burden on my life for ages. Uh, so yeah, I was I, like, uh, so I've, I've made I've made one video so far. It was on uh, Bart Still Four. We haven't released it yet because we wanted to basically explore it a bit more. But yeah, like one month in or something, we had a conversation of, hey, we should get merch started, and then hey, we probably need a website for it, and that's where we got the ball rolling with that, and it just got bigger and bigger. And uh, well, the good thing we was you were we like, now. we're really not doing X and Y correctly. Like this is, <laughs> you know what I mean? We're not doing this right. Uh, mm -hmm. we should be doing this um, I mean my problem with the website is why we went with the website isn't really for any other reason than people were supporting us financially uh, via Twitch and via Patreon at the time and we were like uh, the problem here is or at least my problem was people are supporting us for like $5 a month minimum on Twitch and they don't get the same things that we're giving people on Patreon for $1 which is unfair. Uh, you know, that doesn't work. Because a regular question we always got is like, what's the best way of supporting? We were like, well, Patreon is. You know, that's to me uh, directly. Um, but Twitch is obviously a split revenue. How did... Can I get past here? I think I'm kind of... Fucked, I right? think he's they probably going to pull, pull and then yeah, we're going to yeah, pull yeah. find the pillar here. Okay. Oh, is he fighting them there? Is he... I... Why Maybe? was he doing that? I mean, I died running in. Yeah, you should be fine. There's uh, like low health. Um, yeah, it should be. <laughs> so, and it really pissed me off forever. It was like, how do we fix this? Uh, which was, obviously, we needed to do our own <laughs> system uh, to in order to unify those things, which was a big problem. Like, we kind of... Interestingly enough, we led the way with that. Do you remember how many developers we went to saying, hey... All we want is if you're a Twitch subscriber, it gives you X and Y. And people are like, yep. no, no one's no one's asked for that before. And we're like, what? I mean, it's not that strange, right? And they're like, yeah, it is. <laughs> like, <laughs> no one has that uh, functionality. And they're like, why? <laughs> I don't get it. Uh, and then it's they were like, really we have to that... custom make this kind of stuff, dude. This is not an easy task. I mean, uh, like, some hobby people try, but there wasn't actually, like, a good solution. And, um, yeah, it was, it was really strange. We basically just had to go to... Well, if if, if I was a developer, I could have done it, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then we just had to go to a third party to get it done, basically. Yep. Yeah, it was Which scary. wasn't a big, which, big... Not a big deal, actually, but... Uh, yeah, it was, it was at the very least surprising that no one had thought of doing this before. It was weird. It, honestly, I thought it was weird because you were coming back to me. I was basically just presenting these weird sort of requests, uh, and then you would come back to me like, "Yeah, this is actually way harder." <laughs> and I was like, "Why? <laughs> Why is that the case?" Uh, ah, fuck me. Uh, all spread out feels bad. Uh, like why? Why is this a problem? <laughs> like, guess no one does this, Mike. It's so stupid. <laughs> but we do want to get into. Uh, we do want to start adding some variety stuff in it. It's something me and you've been talking about a lot over the last few weeks, which is why it's good to get your voice out there so you can be heard, mm -hmm. despite your long WoW history. Uh, purely because WoW is not going to last forever. So you know you've got to bear that in mind when doing these kind of things. WoW is not going to last forever, uh, and you need to get it sorted with what you're going to do long term. You can't just be like, oh, and now then WoW died. Or holding on to the last, like, 
20 people playing this game. <laughs> like, please watch exactly. every video I make. That's not going to work. Uh, so it, it kind of paid off for us because you have started making stuff. Like you said, you made a Bard's Tale thing, um, mm -hmm. which worked out extremely well. I'm looking forward to people seeing that. But I also wanted to make some stuff. So we're thinking of doing... Uh, at least our, our last discussion, which seems like a good idea, is a Friday slot, which will be some focus on another game, um, in order to start bridging that gap. Because one thing we've noticed with our audience is, while there are a huge amount of people who only play World of Warcraft, uh, a lot of our older audience uh, actually don't play WoW anymore, uh, which is really interesting. Uh, they still yeah, watch plus... our videos, and they still support us, but they don't watch World of Warcraft. Oh, they don't play well. Yeah, plus the, the 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 gateway to actually increasing our channel much more than we currently uh, are. It's probably going to be more than just WoW, right? Oh, it has to be. Yeah, it really does have to be. Uh, I mean, there's there's no choice because uh, we, mm -hmm. you know, the opportunity to bring people in. Uh, we have had Andy in the past, which was really good, uh, and even then we were like, we want to play other games because strangely, and people, uh, I I find this almost awkward uh, for some people sometimes is i'm a video game fan first uh like not a world of warcraft fan i never played warcraft 3 like <laughs> i've never played it in my life um and it's uh it's one of those things that uh, I, f I found very odd a long time ago it's not odd to me now but i found very odd a long time ago uh was when i did make some videos on other on other games people were like I'd never played anything other than World of Warcraft. Like, it was a very strong feedback we got. It's like, I've only ever played World of Warcraft in my whole life. Uh, or I may have played a mobile game or something like that now, now but mm -hmm. other than that, I've never. And I'm like, what? No way! Which like, is such a shame. There are so many awesome games that you're missing out on by just pigeonholing yourself into WoW. I mean, WoW is is awesome. I understand that it's very, very addicting, and it's it feels like home because you've played it so, for so many years, right? But yeah, we talked about comfortability it's comfortable. this morning, didn't we? Like, yeah, exactly. Well, you see, I, I honestly like when I read those threads uh, that World of Warcraft isn't providing enough for me. I know that's people who only play WoW, and I wonder. I kind of next time I have a, a chance to speak with like Ian um, or something like that, I really want to ask them how they deal with that. Because there are a lot of players, I think, Mike, who expect World of Warcraft to provide all of their gameplay. Uh, probably because it's a subscription-based model as well. It's like, this yeah. game should provide everything I want in the game. And it's never going to provide enough for that. Ever. Right? <laughs> it's never going to do that. You are. It doesn't matter how many new systems they make or whatever. You're going to get through it at some point. You're going to consume that content. Uh, there's no way of getting around that. And so I'm Plus, there's really always curious. that... There's always this awkward part where you want things to do in an MMO, but then once you have to do those things mandatory, it's like, oh, I don't want to do that. Yeah, <laughs> there's and always that tug and pull. It's not good. We're seeing that mm -hmm. from a lot of people. It's like, oh, it's optional, which means I don't have to do it, so I'm not going to do it. And I'm, yeah, <laughs> and we are seeing that happen now. It's like, well, I mean, even people I was surprised by were telling me, you know, when they've stopped playing this in the Shadowlands, because the Shadowlands is perfect for me as a non as a non only World of Warcraft player, because uh, I will take loads of opportunities to play other things. Uh, that oh, the fact that I don't have a you know like a list of things to do every day actually like bothers me. I'm like, really? I'm like, yeah. Like I liked, you know, I like that I can log in. I think it was Loz who said this to me. I like that I could log in and play for nine hours just doing random nonsense. It's not hard, but, you know, like farming herbs. That's, you know, that's what he wants to do. For, and he, that's his big thing. Now, I have no issue with farming, but when it comes to, like, doing that for nine or ten hours, that's not my jam. <laughs> Well, I mean, if, if 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 that's people's gameplay and they enjoy that and it gets taken away, then I understand. I mean, mm -hmm. if he enjoys going out in a day with all of his uh, multi boxers and <laughs> coming home with a shit ton of herbs, mm -hmm. making dough, uh, yeah, I understand why you would kind of maybe not lose interest, but it not being your game anymore, right? Well, yeah, I can't play the way I want to play, uh, mm -hmm. which is the exact sentiment, I think. I can't play how I enjoy playing, uh, which is a little. Under it's not. It's it's so understandable. It is so so understandable. And we were talking this morning because we have some videos we're making this week. It's like getting into the mindset of other players is really hard when you do what we do because you can't help but feel the way you do, right? You know that's mm -hmm. how you feel. So a big part of what we do is try and think. Okay, if I played this way, what is my motivation to play this way? Why do I? Oh, I'm gonna get hit. Mm. 
I could have kept going there. I hate these little, uh, oh my god, uh, splooges. The splooge. Yeah. I always, like, usually if we're doing, like, an organized key, I'm going to blast all my cooldowns into this, but considering it's tyrannical, I'll save them. Do these scale with tyrannical, I guess? No, I don't think so. These? Okay. These are less difficult. It's hard to tell because Chris is healing and he's a god. Uh, he's an absolute <laughs> god mode healer. Uh, whether or not that's the case. You now we have to wait for the prideful because for some reason these don't register for ages. There he is. <laughs> But it is, it is one of those things that we, we look at and we're like, why would anybody be really, really upset at, say, the lack of Azerite power grind, right? And it's because that's... I, I, I personally believe it's because WoW's their only game. So if you only play WoW and you log in and you're like, oh, well, there is loads to do, which the Shadowlands does have, but I don't have to do it. It's not like if I don't do it, it's not a problem, and then you kind of just don't do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're also seeing as well, because you've been the guy going into the Raider IO stuff, like, uh, the amount of people, if there's no, like, immediate reward, they're not going to do it. <laughs> like they're, yeah, exactly. They're gonna, we, we were really surprised. We were crunching the numbers. And we're like, wait a minute. This is like, oh, God. <laughs> this is, like, down to, like, BFA levels, even with all the stuff they've put in. Yikes. Uh, <laughs> I've set up a on the gateway on the right if you want to use it at some point. Okay. Make sure we go in the middle here. Bum, 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 bum. Do you like a good bloodlust? I miss PI. Feels good, right? PI the last few M pluses. It's been really nice. Gotta say, I do love me some PI. <laughs> oh, that was good DPS. That was nice. Not from you, like, obviously. Why are you playing technology? What's this? <laughs> uh, I thought I'd just give it a go. I mean, uh, no, no real reason. It's rising, dude. It's rising. We saw it in the logs. You got some health trinkets to scam with? I do not. I do not. I'm basically full full PvP here. It's uh, I'm I'm a complete scam in this. Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about actually at the beginning. We didn't mention that. So you, uh, although you came back and you were a raider. In fact, you were offered off officer in our guild, um, mm -hmm. and turned it down. Rightfully so. I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nah. they, why the, did you the, turn the, that down? Uh, I I just wasn't that excited about the game anymore. I I was pretty sure that I was not gonna be here for that much longer. Like oh, I was. This is during Jaina for context. This was during, yes, uh, that was that was around the Jaina point. So, um, they were they basically asked me to balance out the officer team because the officer team is very very hardcore. Alex and Laws they come from Seven Days, uh, and I don't. Um, so the idea was kind of that I would balance out them wanting to pull the guild towards very very hardcore and i would pull them back <laughs> mm -hmm. um but i i, I declined because i just i just wasn't that excited about the game anymore and then if i'm gonna be an officer then i'm gonna be a 100 percent officer right yeah i mean you've been an officer in every other guild i've been in i think probably yeah at some point i just it just i did my role just grows out to be an officer role i'm not sure i guess it's just it's because you do, do exactly or... what you just said uh, when you're an officer, you really, really go all out. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you, and that's what you need from your officers. And it's exactly why, interestingly enough, uh, when Loz and Co were talking, uh, that they knew there was no one in the guild who wanted to take over the officer role. <laughs> he was not yeah. wrong. Because, especially with a, a World 100 guild, you need that... Uh, oh, someone picked it up. Nice. Uh, you need your officers to be putting in so much more effort than the rest of you. Like it's so crazy how much we get away with by not being part of that. Um, and uh, I loved them for it because they did that. They were organizing everything from split runs to boost runs to the comps. They were researching heavily. It's you know, so much work, man. It is. Yeah, officer roles are really un underappreciated for the most part. And you really have to enjoy that part because that that's the part that luckily Alex enjoys or enjoyed <laughs> at some point. Uh, it's I all think the at prep. some point, not in, for a while. From what I can yeah. tell, in a conversation with him, not for a quite a long time mm -hmm. uh, has he uh, has he enjoyed doing the, the amount of work he needed. Um, good job. I'm not even going to point out that our guy who was side seat raid leading throughout most of this died to not standing in the circle. I'm not even going to point it out, like. You know what I mean? I'm just a good dude. I'm just gonna. I'm not even gonna mention it. Um, but uh, I want to finish this conversation because we keep drifting off. So mm -hmm. you came back in the Shadowlands um, and worked with us. Uh, 
and weren't part of the raid team so you went the mythic gear uh the casual gearing method uh which you went you went straight to pvp which is why you've not done any mythic plus at all so yeah I exactly mean, right, t- just tell me about that like when did you realize that because we know we had the conversation we actually brought you up in a tdp a while ago which got me and finn a lot of shit uh is that you'd said you know when no one wants to do m plus with me and that's when we got into the conversation it was like you're not wrong because gearing up m plus is really kind of super waste of time and with the way the vault works doing ones that don't contribute in some way feels like a not just a waste of time but a step backwards um yeah so, so the the, the um, like the entire idea was um like i haven't played uh wow since uh jaina so i didn't play from jaina to the start of shadowlands and the idea was basically i'll, I'll come back to shadowlands i enjoyed the things that i did in uh in the alpha and the beta Mm -hmm. uh i'll come back and i'll just uh, just play casually i didn't commit to raiding because i didn't really feel like committing those three days anymore uh or at least until i knew that i was really into the game and again and i could actually commit that time and be the best again um so the thought was just i'll just play casually i'll just do some m plus with the boys you know when they're not raiding just uh gear up with them uh and then you start to notice that i mean it's not like i wasn't invited or wasn't wanted but I was a hindrance in a lot mm. of the gearing up part. Like, I was taking up a spot that was probably better suited for someone that actually needed a gear for raid. So, and leading up to the raid, I stepped out. And then my gear was so far behind that afterwards, people were doing plus 15s and only doing plus 15s because that's what the Great Vault is. You do plus 15s, you don't do anything below. Otherwise, you kind of gimp yourself. Uh, and you have to do more, even more plus 15s afterwards, even if yeah. you just want to help out a friend. So, that's. Why, how I kind of just came to not really do any M plus with anyone, and uh, I hooked up with uh, a player that I did some PvP with back in Legion, and that actually came out to be a lot of fun. So and the, me- the gearing's kind of natural in the PvP, so every week you kind of just get a, a piece, and um, that's how I got to be nah, too well, tenish on this warlock. Well, that's what I'm. So you're entirely PvP good. Yeah, you got a myth. You got a dungeon every battle. single piece. Uh, the only PvE piece is probably the 213 chest, which is from the first week, like heroic cash time walking. Oh no, the four mythic dungeons, I think that is, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and the rest is just all PvP gear and a Dark Moon trinket, so. Uh, it's not very good for PvE because my haste is at like 390 while my verse is at like 900 plus. Or Has a, it bothered a, a, you, 891. the gearing system? Because obviously we're getting a lot of feedback about the loot in the Shadowlands. So I I mean, I'm kind of immune to this. Is again, like being in the bubble is we were raiders anyway. So even with the lowest drop rates, we literally played so much that it didn't matter. Uh, it was frustrating that we were getting less stuff than we would usually get. But, you know, we were doing 10 plus M pluses every week, clearing heroic week one, and then into mythic immediately. Um... You know, we we still we were still top one hundred, so we got our like I got all my gear naturally, regardless of whatever roadblocks we're in in terms of drops. But from the other perspective, as somebody who I think always, if I if I'm wrong here, correct me. But you've always geared through PVE. Uh, a yes, character. every so, single time. Like I've never really used PVP as gearing, so this was sort of a first, and it's probably the best gearing system there is in in shadowlands right now isn't it Mm -hmm. it's it's it rewards you for doing well it rewards you for going above your comfort zone basically like if say say you're new to pvp you are 1400 you're pushing yourself every single week and finally you get that 1600 benchmark and you get to upgrade all your gear with uh 7i levels that's huge that feels Mm -hmm. good right and along the way, there was this awkward part where Mythic Plus hit and people were getting like uh, 200 plus piece after 200 plus piece and Honor gear was like kind of behind because you couldn't upgrade it. That was kind of the awkward part. I think they could have done with pulling the uh, final Honor upgrade where you can upgrade it to 197 uh, back about two or three weeks. So there was that, that awkward part where the PvP players couldn't really play with their PvE friends because they were just behind in gear. Mm-hmm. Uh, but other than that, I think the PvP gearing system in Shadowlands has actually worked very, very well. So let's put some predictions out there. From your perspective, what do you think the Valor changes are going to do? Do they? Do you feel like that's going to push you back into maybe some PvE or is it just not enough because you've already found a gearing path that works for you and it's paying off? 
Um, I think for me at this point, it's probably going to be side grades, right? It's just going to be uh, getting rid of some first on my gear and getting more haste and more mastery, uh, which is the, st the stats that you'd want for, say, a Warlock or my Paladin. Because mm -hmm. um, every single PvP piece has verse on it, which uh, kind of ties into that being the best gear for PvP, which is good. Um... I think the Valor points are probably going to help the people the most that are just kind of stuck now uh, at like the plus 9, plus 10 keys and they're just finding it hard to uh, outplay the content and they might receive some upgrades from Valor uh, that helps them do 12, 13 and actually get to that 15 key uh, to get the max uh, great, uh, great Vault reward. Uh, I think, that think that's the... probably uh, where Valor points come in, right? I hope so, because uh, especially those guys who just don't like PvP, which are a lot. You know, they're just not going to PvP, no matter how much. Or just aren't good at it. Like, if you yeah. want PvP gear to be good, you kind of need to hit that 1600, 1800 range, right? Mm hmm. Luckily, I got there by just, like, shooting people once and them dying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> if, you, if you have the gear, you can just kind of PvE people down. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that PvP is incredibly difficult at 16 or 1800, but. You know, for a lot of people, it is difficult. So, oh, it is. Uh, I mean, you messaged me and made me feel bad. You went, you have any idea how much I've been carried <laughs> by your gear? And I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> how do we win? I just one-shot people. In yeah, your experience, you, you then, just... I've, while I've got you, uh, I just want to say, I think we should do one more run, because uh, I do want to carry on talking to you. Uh, we didn't get through everything. But where, do you, where in your experience is the most troubling Mythic Plus keys right now? Because it used to be about seven and eights. Well, harder than what we just did there. Right? Um, phew, I don't know. I, like, I haven't experienced it much. I haven't pugged much. Uh, like, my guess is that it is um, kind of at the, at the 10 range, I think, anyway. Well, 10 gives Prideful. So do you think 9 is where it gets tricky? Because Prideful, I don't know. Uh, let's roll the dice. I think we jump into 1 and just see what we find in the lower key. Because uh, as we've seen today, some people are really annoyed that we jump into like these 15s and 16s and, <laughs> and do all right. And just completely demolish them. <laughs> so should we go and take a look and to see what's going on in Elsewhere? I think that might be a good idea. Sure, let's have a go. All right, well, in next episode, guys, uh, we'll see you then. So thank you, Dops, for your first video with us where we got to chat with you. You have been on Absolutely. the stream highlights, but on the main channel. Uh, we look forward to seeing more stuff from you in the upcoming times. But... Bye-bye. Bye-bye.